Welcome, everybody, to another fantastic episode of Super Shares, powered by Q. My name is Joe Marquez, Director of Academic Innovation for Q. We're so excited that you're joining us for the second episode of Season 4 of Super Shares. Yes, we started Super Shares all the way back in July of 2020 and have continued to bring innovations and ideations to you, our Q members, and beyond uh, based on uh, new things that teachers are trying in the classroom, new apps that are coming out, and, and just new pathways that educators are taking or new trends that are popping up. And that is why last week's episode, if you haven't seen it, jump into our YouTube channel uh, to go in and, and see it. But that was on the generative AI tool known as chat GPT. Now we did this last week and you know, there's been so much, there's been so much that has been happening with chat GPT since we aired our episode last Wednesday. Number one, everybody's rushing to the website, right? Everybody's there. In fact, it's so packed. It's hard to get in. Like right now it says chat GPT is at capacity right now. Right. It's amazing to think a website could be at a capacity. Right. But that's why people are just diving into it because it's just so uh, it's so fun to play with. So amazing to see what results are coming out of it. And I think one of the big things is that Microsoft had put in a billion dollars into uh, 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 kind of the backing of uh chat gpt into the backing of the uh the open ai platform uh that that it's being built off of and even more so there are so many investors looking into how can chat gpt be brought into all these different tools all these different platforms all these different apps all these different websites just across the board how can it be uh integrated into their platform or something new there's so much chatter about it. So much chatter about it. If, again, if you did not see our episode on ChatGPT, please jump in to the time machine known as YouTube uh, to check it out. And if, if you're wondering what our YouTube channel is, just go to youtube.com slash qorg, and that's where you'll find all the past episodes of Super Shares, but also our season four uh, opener on ChatGPT. And it got me to wonder, um, you know, what, what other generative apps are out there? What other generative AI? And that's the term everybody's using right now. Uh, you know, I, 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 I thought maybe just AI, uh, created content, right. But generative AI sounds so much cooler. What else is out there? Well, there's lots of cool generative, uh, AI for image creation. And I, and, and there's a lot of this being integrated into some of the tools you're probably already using at this moment. So I thought, why not jump into one of the very first uh, generative AI tools uh, still from uh, open AI, uh, and that's Dolly, right? So Dolly, D-A-L-L -L dot E, Dolly is a generative AI that uses your text-based prompts to create a brand new image that did not exist before. And just like we talked about with ChatGPT, where it has a plethora, like billions and billions and billions of samples of writing all across the internet from humans throughout history and time before 2021. Um, Dolly has access to all these images ac across the internet uh, and, and time. And so it knows different styles, it knows different tones, it knows different everything. And as, as far as I know, as far as I know, what, what this does is this. So right here, you type in a prompt right up here. And it takes this prompt, this text-based prompt, turns the text into tokens. It throws the tokens into its web of, uh, of, of, of matrix. It identifies what the user is trying to get. It goes into its matrix and finds all the different pieces of what you're looking for and slowly build something new uh, in, a, in a way called diffusion. And 
basically it keeps looking at the image and says, nope, 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 closer, closer. Like, it's like, yep, yep, nope, nope. And it, it keeps going down this path until it sees an image that recognizes the image based upon the text tokens that were created. I mean, it's, it's super complex <laughs> of what's going on. But basically, it boils down to you type it, it creates it, right? It's pretty cool. Now, there's some caveats in this, some limitations. Like, you don't want to type in, uh, uh, you know, public figures. It will say, sorry, we can't generate those images, right? Um, but, but there's a lot of other cool things that you can try. Now, I haven't tried, uh, you know, some of the copyrighted stuff, right? But I, I guess even in copyright, when you do a copyright and then you – change it enough to make something new it can release uh, you know but but let, let's play around let's play around with this uh so let's say that you were writing a children's book based upon king kong and you wanted king kong to dress as the flower girl all right so i, I i'm going to type this in so uh king kong dressed as a flower girl for a wedding in the winter All right and so king kong dressed as a flower girl for a wedding in the winter so i generate that it's going through all the stuff that i said it's taking every single one of those pieces of text it's tokenizing them it's going through the matrix it's diffusing all of it together to create something brand new and so there you go Right? So brand new images that didn't exist before I typed that. And this is King Kong dressed as a flower girl in the winter. Pretty, I mean, they're not the greatest <laughs> images, right? Not the greatest images being produced here, uh, but it's all on the web right now. Uh, you know, my wife calls this like the, uh, um, the, 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 the aftermarket <laughs> version like if you were to type mickey mouse it would look like the knockoff version of mickey mouse ricky ricky rouse <laughs> but but it, i mean it, it does create something new that you could kind of i mean i think this one over here is is a little bit is a little bit funny right um let's let's see what else what else we can do how about how about um a an alien Eating a burrito in in a tent filled with ducks. Let's see. Let's see what happens. An alien eating a burrito in a tent filled with ducks. So again, it's it's tokenizing every single one of those words. It's running it through the matrix. It's diffusing it and creating something. And so here we go. It's not always the greatest thing in the world. Right. Like, like, here you go. An alien eating a burrito. It looks like a burrito bowl. He must be a healthy alien uh, in a tent with ducks. Um, it's, you know, it, it doesn't always hit the mark, but, but it's there. Right. Uh, what about this? A photo realistic, photo realistic picture of a dog in the pool playing playing the trumpet a photorealistic picture of a dog in the pool playing a trumpet let's let's see what pops up here right sometimes it's really fun just to like that waiting kind of what what is what is the computer going to deliver to me so there we go look look at this it's a photo realistic right they try to bring in as realistic looking dog as possible in the pool well this one's not in the pool but it's near the pool and something's like running off of his arm right there i don't know me uh but but he's playing a trumpet like this is what we thought from our brain and this is what dolly generated i i mean i i think it's pretty cool right i mean because it's taking something from our brain and 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 uh visualizing it on the screen now how can i see this being utilized like in class i mean imagine you know like you have artist block like there's writer's block but but imagine um if you're trying to write uh draw something 
you have an idea what you want to draw, but you have this, 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 you know, creator's block. And it's like, I can't do it. I can't get past the sum. What if this is that special sauce that gets you over that? Oh, okay. Now I know what I want to do. You're not going to uh, mimic this exactly, but it might spark that idea like, ah, this is what I want to do, right? That that's That's where I think this could go. It could spark that interest. Or what if your students are, you know, writing a short story or they're, they're you know, you're using, uh, you know, from a past episode uh, of, of, of super shares, we had a, a gentleman from New York, Joe, come on here, uh, Joel, come on here. And, uh, he showed us how to make a, uh, uh, uh a little miniature book using just, uh, one piece of paper, uh, utilizing Google slides or Microsoft PowerPoint. Imagine if, you know, the key to that story is the written part. The kids write it, but they want to bring in some images. They don't have enough time to make the images. They don't want to go off of Google and just grab images. They want something unique. This is something they can do because you can download these things. Because I'm going to come up here and I'm just going to hit download just like that. And here's another cool thing. Like, let's say you like this one, but it's you want something different. Like you like it, you can click on it and say, "Wow, oh, you know what? I like this one. I want to see more options." So I select generate variations. So what you find one you like, and you hone in a little bit more on that style with those terms. I want to see these variations, and so there you go. Right here's the original, and now it's giving us a couple different variations off of that original. Right, pretty neat. Right. And one of the other cool things that, you know, it, it saves all of your past uploads up over here, right? So, um, you know, it, it's, it's not, it's not a, uh, a secret that I love Bob's big boy. And um, one of my students, uh, when, when I was a science teacher, one of my students knew that I love Bob's big boy. And she drew me this amazing, amazing Bob's big boy anime that, I, I mean, I still keep it, this image. I've digitized it. I've cleaned it up so that I can use it elsewhere. I just love it. But you can upload images that currently exist that you made and see the different variations. And again, just like my wife said, the knockoff Bob Big Boy. I mean, this one's a little bit scary, right? Look at this one. Look at this one right there. That's a little bit hunting right there. You know what I mean? Um you can make a horror movie based on that image, but it's brand new. You know, it's similar, but not quite. Like, let's say you like this one. You want to generate variations just like we did before. So it takes, okay, you like that kind of neat, kind of close. We're going to do that. It brings it in, creates those variations, and then it comes on up. And let's take a look to see what it does. Boom. Here's the uh, variation of the original. So now here's variations off the variations. I, I mean, shoot, this one right here looks like Steve Carell from The Office dressed up as Bob's big boy. But I, I love how they have these little things. I mean, again, this one's a little bit scary right there. But I just love how it creates these things. It's a, it, it's, it, it's, it's a load of fun, right? My daughter had this one, a unicorn, uh, uh, a unicorn eating noodles, um, riding a skateboard, uh, at night, uh, or in outer space. And, and this is what it came up with. My daughter came and gave me some of these things. Like, here's another one, unicorn riding a rocket ship in outer space. Um, let's see. There was one that she said she, oh, um, there was, uh, oh, here's one that I did. Godzilla dressed as a flower girl, uh, for a wedding, um, a dog, uh, a dog eating a hot dog as a superhero. Like these are all just from, um, these are all just from your mind to text and it generates these for you. And I'll tell you, I've seen some worse drawings in kids books. Like, look at this guy. This, th that could be the cover, right? Uh, right there. I mean, I'm going to download that one. I, I kind of like it. That might be a cool sticker to go on. Um, you know, oh, and, and teachers love stickers too. Right. So why not use this to generate like a sticker and then manipulate it a little bit more on it. But I, I just wanted to show you this. this. So this one's Dolly right here. And, and to get to Dolly, um, basically, all you have to do is uh, go to uh, labs.openai.com, labs.openai.com, the, uh, you know, the 
URLs right down here at the bottom. And you you just log in with your Google account and you and you play around with it. Um, and again, people may be asking, well, you know, what, what's the the privacy rights and this and that? You know, I I, I would say um, you, you probably don't want your students to be logging into this at school, uh, but showing them on your computer up on your screen and having kids kind of shout out what they want to see pop up, that could be pretty neat as well. And then the students can have their parents log in. I, I believe just like ChatGPT, uh, there is an 18 uh, eight, uh, year old age limit uh, or age beginning, I guess you would say. Um, but they're fun to play around with. Absolutely fun to play around with. Um, there's another site that kind of uses the same thing. This one's called Stable Diffusion. Right. And, and same idea. Right. So I want to I want to uh, type in an alligator. In. An alligator in. Uh, aviator clothes. On a surfboard. One word on a surfboard um, in, out, can't type today, outer space. Generate image. And, and you can see, it, it, it's, this one tells you where you are in the queue as, as it goes down, queue, no pun intended, queue with a Q, uh, U-E. Uh, and and it and it generates that that image here for you, and it's based upon the same coding uh, as, as Dolly. But Stable Diffusion, you can actually download this directly. Um, not not this one, but there's a lot. There's a, a couple different packages that will allow you to download it directly to your computer, and uh, using your co uh, computer's processing power, create more realistic images than it does just based off this web-based one. Um, that's why you'll see a lot of different uh, cool uh, generative AI images um, that look much better. But look at this, here you go. Um, so I think this one's the closest because you got the aviator goggles right here. I, I guess one of the aviator things is you have to wear a scarf. Um, but here you go, and this one's a weird looking alligator, but you know, it does its best. It does its best, but you know, these are brand new images that didn't exist before. And it just took the idea from your head and brought them to life. So that's pretty neat. Um, but here's the cool thing. Canva. Canva even brought generative AI into the mix. Now, if you haven't played with Canva, it is 100% free for educators. So if you actually go uh, to uh, canva.com slash education, um, it allow you to uh, request a full premium account for yourself as a teacher. You just have to uh, show proof of you being an educator and normally just your email uh, at an education institution will do the trick. Um, but, uh, you know, you get you can have access to all this stuff. But let me show you how, how it where it's at and how it works in Canva. So off to the side, you have your, you know, traditional elements and uploads and text and projects, but there's also a text to image. Now, if you don't see that initially, just click on your waffle over here and uh, it should appear right at the very top, text to image. And by the way, there's a lot of cool things you can add to your Canva by coming over here. Like they have draw, simple sketches and they have a lot of cool things that you can add. Add Google Maps to your design. There's a lot of cool things that you can add on. It's like add-ons in Google, right? That's what these little things are. But I'm going to go to my text to images right here. And it looks like the exact same thing. Um, so let's say I want a bear in a spacesuit eating cheese. And wearing slippers. Um, now with this one, you can choose your style. It can be a photo, it can be a drawing, it can be 3D, it can be a painting, um, or you can have them surprise you. Um, I always like to select surprise me because then I get a variety of, of different options over here. Um, and, you know, I, I have to say that's, you know, with, with Canva, uh, it's been a little hit and miss with the uh, generative AI images 
that uh, have appeared towards myself, um, but they're still there, right? So uh, like, here it is. Here's a bear right there wearing slippers on the moon. I don't really see him eating cheese. Uh, maybe that's a big piece of cheese in the background, right? Um, here's another one right here. Uh, that one, maybe that's cheese. Maybe that's a bear, but he's in outer space. He's not wearing slippers. So it's a little bit hit and miss with this. But here's the cool thing about this, right? Um, it adds it to your upload folder when you find one that you like. Uh, so that's pretty neat. Um, you know, um, if I if I go back to it, um, let's say I want to uh, start again. And and this time I want a... a uh, a basket basketball player basketball player in a two two playing frisbee right so a basketball player in a two two playing frisbee i want it to look like a photo Want it to look like a photo and I hit generate. And so we wait. So let's see what they can give me with a basketball player in a tutu playing frisbee. Let's see what it will generate for us. And and, and again, uh, I believe it's it's using the same kind of coding for uh for all this. So here we go. Let's take a look. Um that's that's an interesting one right there. I don't see Frisbee. That's a little scary with, with, with the way they have their face. So, again, it's not spot on, but that was a little bit freaky as well. Uh, but, you know, they, they, this is at its infancy. It's at the very beginning. And, and it's cool to see that Canva is already jumping into generative AI kind of realm, right? Um, and you know they these things these things are are coming at us quick right um these things are, are popping up everywhere people are tweaking them people are throwing money at these companies to try and amplify what generative ai can do for them and for us um a lot in the private sector a lot in the business sector and you better believe it's going to be uh flowing into the education sector. Uh, and in fact, we are going to have a free QPD, right? So free for members of Q uh, uh, next Thursday. Um, so that would be um, a week from uh, tomorrow. So what is today? Today is January 11th. Uh, so it would be Thursday the 19th at four o'clock. We are going to be doing a kind of a roundtable discussion and uh, kind of playground on the various uh, generative AI platforms that are out there. And I sure hope ChatGPT allows us to play around because right now it is just on fire at the moment and everybody just wants in uh, to, to be able to play around with it. Um, and it looks like, you know, I'm, I'm trying to log in right now as we speak, uh, it, it, it let me in. So it just takes a little bit of persistence uh, to be able to get in uh, to those things. And so again, if you missed last week's Chat GPT looks just like this. Pretty cool. Definitely play around with that one. Definitely play around with Dolly right here. Uh, check out Stable Diffusion. Definitely play around with the Canva one to see what you can come up with. And I'd love to see some of your um, uh, some of your AI creations. I wouldn't. I guess I wouldn't say your creations. It would, it's it's AI. I'd love to see some of the creations that you come up with. So if you do watch this, uh, you know, use hashtag Q. Use hashtag We Are Q. Uh, and we would love to see what some of the things you did to come up with. Speaking of Q, speaking of being together, speaking of community, speaking of all that amazing things, please know that we at Q really value you. And we want you to value Q. And one of the best ways to do that is to attend the Q conference. Now, Q uh, is, is known for their large conferences over in Palm Springs, California. So on March 16th, to 18th on March 16th to 18th, uh, Palm Springs, California, we will be having our large spring Q conference. And if you go over to springq.org, you can register today. And if you put in, 
if you put in for a uh, a session at Spring Q, please be ready because all of our session readers have been done reading, uh, and we are quickly going through um, all of those uh, all those scores and recommendations, and we will be getting out all of those notices. Um, we're going to try to get them out all by Friday. So the long wait, and we will be getting those out to you very, very shortly. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us for episode two of Super Share season four. Uh, I, I hope this week finds you well, whether it's your first week back or second week back. Uh, I hope you are having a fantastic one. And as always, thank you so much for doing everything that you do for education, for your students, and for your profession. Have yourselves a wonderful, 